everybody. I want you to stop and just listen. Do you hear that? It's bird singing. I love to hear birds sing. I also like watching their antics, like the brown pelican diving into the water to catch a fish or a gull that laughs at me. Yes, there is such a thing, a laughing gull. Or even a little bird that's so fast, he can move forwards and backwards, left and right, and sometimes he's so fast, you can't even see his wings. Do you know what that bird is? A hummingbird, that's right. Well, today, I've decided to go on a hike. I want to listen for the birds. I want to look for the birds. I've brought my walking stick with me. I brought some binoculars, and I've even brought some art supplies so that if I see one that looks very cool, I may try to paint him. And also, I want to tell you about an artist who was also a scientist, and have I got a story for you. It all began over 200 years ago in the island country of Haiti. At this time, Haiti was a French colony. A French Navy officer moved to Haiti and bought a sugarcane plantation. While there, he had a son, and they named him John James Audubon. When John James was five years old, his father decided his family needed to leave Haiti because of slave unrest. They moved back to France, where Mr. Audubon purchased this house with the money he made in the sale of his plantation. John James loved growing up in this house. He got a great education. He learned to play the flute and violin. He learned to ride horses. He learned to fence and to dance. But what he enjoyed most was roaming in the woods, often returning with such treasures as birds, eggs, and nests. He would bring them into his room for display and loved to draw pictures of them. In 1803, John James Audubon turned 18 years old. His father was a little concerned he was afraid that John James would get called to participate in Napoleon's war. And so he decided to send his son to America. John James was so excited. He was going to the new world and the adventure was about to begin. His father purchased a lead mine in Mill Grove, Pennsylvania. And he had John James live with the tenants, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas. He spent most of his time roaming the wooded hills, hunting, observing, collecting, and sketching. It was during this time that he became fascinated with wildlife, and especially birds. He observed their size, how their feathers lay, their habitat, what they ate, how they flew, what their eggs and nests looked like, and the differences between male and female coloring. He would make careful sketches of the birds and color them with watercolors. The more he painted pictures of birds, the better artist he became. He wanted to show every detail of the bird in his paintings. Often he would shoot the bird in order to look at it up close and study it. He would take the dead bird home and begin to paint quickly before the bird would begin to lose its beauty and before it would begin to stink. When John James Audubon was 20 years old, he met a beautiful young lady that lived on the plantation next to his home. Her name was Lucy, and she was the most wonderful woman he had ever met. Lucy thought John James was funny, kind, really smart, and had the most incredible collection of birds, nests, and eggs. Not long after, they married and wound up moving out west to Kentucky. John James wanted to see birds that he had not seen in Pennsylvania. He and Lucy opened a dry goods store and John James worked there, but really he longed to be out in the woods, to be out in nature. He had so many discoveries to make. He learned how to taxidermy or stuff the animals. After he shot the animal, he would remove all the meat to feed his family. He would then stuff the animal with cloth, and this helped them to last a little longer. He collected other animals, but he loved birds most of all. 
He traveled down the Mississippi River to Louisiana to research, observe, and paint even more types of birds. He was gone for a long time, and he really missed Lucy and his two sons. He sent word to Lucy that she needed to close the store and join him in Louisiana. She missed him too, and so she and the boys headed down to Louisiana. Lucy worked as a school teacher to help make money. John James would teach art lessons, fencing lessons, and would draw people's portraits to earn money. He traveled to Florida to paint and research birds. He traveled to Canada to see the different birds they had there. He painted and painted. I would think Lucy would get tired of dusting around all of these paintings of birds. He had painted well over 1,000 species, but she didn't. She thought John James was the most incredible artist, and she supported him completely. John James looked at all of his life's work, these paintings of birds, and he looked at all the notes he had made about each bird, and he had an idea. Wouldn't it be incredible if you could have all these paintings put into a book so everyone could learn and enjoy? With the support of his wife, Lucy, he went to New York to look for a publisher. But when he got there, the publishers weren't interested. They suggested that he go to England to find a publisher. Perhaps the English people would like a book on American birds. With the little money he had left, he did just that. He headed to England. This was his last shot. If they didn't like his work, well, he didn't know what he would do. Much to his surprise, the people of England and the publishers loved his paintings. They also loved him. He had long hair and wore the clothes he wore when traipsing through the woods looking for birds. He called himself an American woodsman and the English people couldn't get enough of him. He found a publisher that would print his paintings into a book. He wanted to call the book Birds of America. Now here's something interesting. This was going to be difficult because John James painted his birds life-size on the piece of paper. So a house wren would only take up a little space on the paper, but a flamingo would need a huge piece of paper. His book was such a success that by the time he returned home to the United States, he was a rock star. His books with his paintings and a book on ornithology, that's the study of birds, using all the information he had collected through the years, made him very wealthy. Luckily, today, they are printed in a much easier size to handle. John James Audubon reunited with his precious wife, Lucy, and they moved to New York. He continued to paint and to study, but he also noticed a change. He remembered as a young man, there were a lot of birds and they were everywhere. Suddenly, he noticed that the bird population had begun to dwindle or get smaller. As long as he was able, he educated people on the importance of nature, of taking care of the habitat of animals, and on protecting the bird population. John James Audubon died in 1851 at the age of 65 years old. In 1905, a group of people concerned with the changes in the environment established the National Audubon Society in honor of John James Audubon. Their mission is to protect our birds and the natural environment so that we can enjoy the birds that John James Audubon loved so much. I really appreciate the work that the National Audubon Society does. I recently had an experience that made me realize how important it is to take care of our birds. I was down on the Texas Gulf Coast and I was fishing. I'd hired a fishing guide to come with me in order to help me locate the fish. We were going through some of the back shallow waters. He had a really long pole and he was poling our boat quietly through the waters. Suddenly, he stopped. He was looking at something. I followed where he was looking and right in front of us were two whooping cranes. 
I had heard of these incredible birds and how they were to migrate to this part of Texas, but I had never seen one. Not many people have. They usually stay away from people and there aren't very many left to see. There are only a little over 800 birds left. At one point, there were only 20 birds, but thanks to organizations like the National Audubon Society, those numbers have increased. They are incredible birds. They stand five feet tall. They have a wingspan of seven feet and the black on the tips of their wings isn't seen until they take flight. I hope their population keeps growing because once they are gone, they are gone forever. We can't make any more. I have been inspired by John James Audubon. I brought along some paper and some watercolors. A few minutes ago, I saw a beautiful red cardinal and I think I'm going to attempt to paint one. Thank you for joining me on my hike today and I wanna remind you to stay safe and stay healthy. If you continue to watch our videos and you subscribe, I will continue to make story time and art activities and how to draws just for you. If you like our channel, you're going to love our High Gatsby Art History video series. It's taught by me and my little buddy Gatsby. Oh, have I got a story for you.